Oh, good morning, Eric Bowler. Good morning. How are you? You do not need a haircut. It looks tousled and sexy and fine. <laughs> oh, I, I screwed up the sides. I tried to do it myself. It was bad. <laughs> I always screw up the back when I do it. Cause I can't, oh, cause I you can't even see. try the back. Yeah, you can't even see back there. Oh, I have a very low hairline back there. So How about the, it needs the it. woman at the protest? I need a haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Patton Oswalt had a great, like, you know, Anne Frank stayed quiet in an attic for two years. You have Netflix, food delivery. It's yeah. like, let me in, Fuddruckers. It's like, shut up. Just <laughs> Shut up. Um, yeah, I have to say, uh, Eric, I mentioned this last hour. These are, you know, not stories that make anybody, at least don't make me happy. But uh, Dave tweeted, I talked with one of my friends this morning. She told me about a man who was 73, watched Fox News all the time. His friends mm. and family warned him not to go to Spain, but he said that he watched Fox and the virus was a hoax. He went. Mm -hmm. he, he is dead now. He died of uh, COVID-19. Um, yeah. And obviously, statistically, there's going to be more and more of those stories, including all all of these people that were just, you know, paid by right wing groups to go astroturf uh, protest and, you know, by other people that weren't there. You didn't see Stephen Moore there without a mask. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it's funny. Um, I think a month ago I was on Joy's show and I said, that, you know, Fox News has been getting people killed for decades. Mm -hmm. And I pointed to, you know, their crusade against affordable health care, for instance, or their crusade against expanded Medicare. And, uh, you know, conservatives kind of went crazy. Oh, you can't say that about Fox News. Oh, the you know, that rhetoric is so out of the mainstream. They're not getting anyone killed. Uh, obviously, you know, they become they become the merchants of death for this pandemic. And everyone knew they would. I remember like uh, two weeks in, people said, oh, there's been a shift. You know, Rupert Murdoch gets it. They're going to be responsible. And, you know, anyone who waits for Rupert Murdoch to do the right thing is going to die a lonely person. Yeah, uh, lonely and then... Person. Q, Q Dr. Oz, right? On, uh, yeah, I oh mean, my gosh. Uh, it is the kind right. of stuff they say out loud on Fox, right? It's just, yeah, right. like two and to three million kids dead, fine. That's fine for opening the economy. And right. then it, somebody who, oh, our friend Kristen Johnson tweeted, Oprah, come get your doctors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Dr. Phil noted doctor of, bull, of, of bullology, right? Saying, yeah. comparing it to what, flu, car accidents. They're not contagious the way this is contagious. Right. I mean, it's just, there's such idiocy. Like, I think Dr. Fauci even pushed back on Laura Ingram, who was comparing it to AIDS, or, oh, SARS, right. SARS right. just disappeared. And he's like, this is different. Yeah. You AIDS, right. you had to have, bot you know, right. you had to exchange bodily fluids. This is exactly. unbelievably contagious, unbelievably deadly. AIDS, first of all, they came up with, obviously, treatment. Mm -hmm. And SARS right. Right. did go away before they, and she, he was like, these kind of viruses don't just disappear. Right. Right. Yeah. Just well, I mean, uh, Bill Bennett, Bill Bennett was on Fox News last mm -hmm. week saying, well, only 60,000, not only, but, you know, oh, 60,000 people died. Why did we destroy the economy? You know, if we did nothing, you know, there right. were models for if the United States does absolutely nothing, no social distancing, kind of does what Trump was thinking about, just let it wash through. We'd be at six, you know, possibly 600,000. So, A, there's a vaccine for the flu. If there was no vaccine for the flu, that 60 number would also be 600,000 people. Yeah. So it's just, it, it, it's, you almost get tired pointing out, you know, we're dealing with apples and oranges. And, you know, you mentioned your, you heard about that 70-year-old person who, you know, went abroad and died. New York Times had a good story over the weekend. I think it was a New York City bar owner. Same yeah. situation. Yeah. Uh, watched Fox News nonstop. Children said, please don't go on this cruise, went on the cruise uh, and, and died. So um, and now we're now we're seeing these protests. Right. Yeah. And I, I just put a column up this morning about how these protests are now getting the Tea Party treatment, which is get they're getting fawning press coverage. I mean, Illinois, they had 50 people. Uh, you know, uh, Louisiana, yeah. they had dozens of people. Yeah, Alex Jones shows up, there's a hundred idiots, and yeah. they cover it like it's some grassroots up. How are governors going to deal with this uprising? Of, it, yeah. It's been, it's being called a movement. You know, ABC last night said this is coast to coast, and they pointed to five states over the weekend. This is exactly what happened with the Tea Party. This is during Obama. This is manufactured protests, deep-pocketed Republicans behind him. You know, and the press, you know, de uh, treats it like, you know, this clarion call of common sense from, from the heartland. This is nonsense. Yeah. You just mentioned the polling, overwhelming polling, uh, who support these staying home orders. And there's a Gallup poll, even if the orders are lifted, 60 plus percent Americans said they're not going to go back to, quote, normal activities right away. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and real quick, you know, remember anti-war? There were yeah. there were protests that had tens of thousands yeah. of people. Yeah. You know, page page eighteen in the metro section of the New York Times. 
Occupy Wall Street for the first couple of weeks got basically no national coverage. Yeah. There's an absolute double standard for manufactured outrage among conservatives and the Beltway press just runs in and, and treats it like uh, it treats it like this, you know, widespread grassroots mm-hmm. movement. So I think we need to keep a, a, an eye on that. These are literally dozens of angry people, and who cares in a, in a nation of 330 million? Yeah, no, exactly. By the way, speaking of millions, I wanted to go back to something you said. Is it how horrifying is it that Trump clearly said that as it, it, it clearly it was discussed as a possibility of doing nothing yeah. and letting right. it just wash through, and it would be a, you know two million people? I'm like, oh, that was something that you actually thought. I mean. <laughs> The fact yeah. that, like things just don't sink in as to how horrifying they are, right? That, right? that you're right. Like these death numbers and infection numbers, highest in the world, are right. with all of us flattening the mm-hmm. curve. But you know, he's like, oh well, that's it was better than the two million I was gonna let die. I'm like, okay, um, right. okay. So you again, <laughs> we keep saying the same thing. We're the perfect couple because we don't mind that we keep repeating <laughs> the same stories to each other over and over and over. But you just said why this garbage gets aired 10 hours each week remains one of the great embarrassing media mysteries of our time. Um, And you your headline, just ABC, CNN, New York Times all admit Trump briefings aren't news. So now what? Pull the plug. You say they choose to um, every day they choose to turn the cameras on, allow Trump to ramble sometimes for hours as he alternately unravels and misinforms the public during a health crisis. Um, uh, you, you, You quoted John King said, well, that was a propaganda aired at taxpayer expense in the White House briefing rooms. So why air it, right? right? I mean, they're they're at the point of it. You said the New York Times said the daily evening briefing has largely been turned into a lengthy infomercial starring Mr. Trump, who brags about his administration's efforts, mocks his critics, and berates reporters. And yet, here we are, right? I mean, it's just and here we are. And, yeah. and, and the third example, ABC, um, they pointed out at one point Trump had done twenty six briefings in twenty seven days, and in their news report, they point out the briefings contain very little news. I retweeted, you know, I, re- I was responding to why is this garbage air 10 times a day because someone had posted a, a, a clip on Saturday of him going off on the Russia and the Mueller investigation and how he had, you know, he had outsmarted the press and he was the victim. I mean, it was an impeachment speech. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and, and so there are like nine different reasons why these briefings shouldn't be aired. There is no news. He, over the weekend, you know, the White House put out the statement in terms of testing and, and reopening. And they basically said, it's up to the states. We're out of the pandemic business. We are washing our hands and good luck, good luck, governors. So if the, if the federal government has, is basically out of the pandemic business, these briefings are even more meaningless. Like they're literally the definition of meaningless. Yeah. Um, and he misinforms and their rallies and they don't give Joe Biden equal time. But it's all been normalized, and this is a classic example of how Trump imposes his will on the news media. You know, uh, four years ago, no one uh, in, in, living in the Beltway would have believed it if you said the White House press briefings will be canceled. Impossible. Not even thinkable. It was done. No one said boo. Yeah. yeah. No one would have said, you know, um, the, the networks and, and cable news are going to air Trump 12 hours a week as he rambles inconceivable it'll never happen now it's done well so right this, this and they say well you know the it's important information during a pandemic the public but Eric, then you need to point out that everything he says is untrue and everything he promises ends up being a lie because what yep. that's not reassuring the marion people that I, what did i just say they just reported the number of tests was the I number was of tests say, that was reported to we were going to have by march 8th it's like the, i remember yeah. i remember the first uh, pandemic briefing with pence not trump before trump decided hey I think I'll do that. Literally, the first question Pence was asked, how many, where are the tests? How many? Oh, we're going to have four million. That was at least five or six weeks ago. Yeah. And as you say, now they're bragging about four million. Look, obviously, we need 40 million. Uh, this country is never going to open up in, in a true sense uh, until that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, the, this is the danger when you don't have a republic anymore, when you have these patchworks of states Try There are no Trump over the weekend talked about states setting up borders, I think, and checkpoints. <sighs> and, and that's not how any of this works. If yeah. South Carolina wants to reopen, which they're going to do, guess what? A lot of bored New Yorkers are going to fly down to South Carolina and go to their beaches and restaurants. And guess what? They're going to have COVID. Yep. So, right. I right. mean, it's so obvious what's going to happen. Uh, but Trump absolutely uh, does not want any leadership, does not want to be 
associated with this. And as you and I have talked and I've written a lot about, we still don't know the simple, the press still will not ask the simple question, why is Trump doing this? Why did he basically order a stand down, the government to stand down for a virus invasion? It well, can't all be incompetence. Well, that's, that's the thing, Eric. Instead of keep screaming, where are the tests? You have to get to the next point and go, this must be deliberate, that you don't want widespread testing because he doesn't want the numbers to go up. And he would rather, you know, uh, risk deaths and get the economy going, right. uh, quote unquote. Anyway, I, also, by the way, you uh, you talked about the uh, just the quickly in the midst of this whole thing, the Democratic primary. Um, New York Times has a line that says among Americans who voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary, there's a nearly universal lack of enthusiasm for Joe Biden. You said this is like the fifth time The New York Times has written the story in the last two weeks. For some reason, they always omit the recent poll that says 96 percent of Democrats support Biden versus 89 percent of Republicans who support Trump. So yeah. they still have to find a Democrats in disarray story, don't <laughs> they? Dems in disarray. Dems in disarray. Yeah. And, and then I pointed out, I think the New York Times during the Democratic primary probably did 15 youth vote stories. All of them then said the same thing. All of them said, you know, Biden has a problem. It turns out it was the 65 plus vote. If we're doing ages that really matter, I doubt the New York Times did two stories about, you know, the quote unquote elderly vote. Look, you know, I, I feel bad. There is no campaign to cover. In, in a way, I mean, right. these news outlets have hundreds of people who were hired to cover a, a campaign that isn't happening and it's going to happen online. So I, I kind of see why they go back to this yeah. you know, story over. Oh, here's a conflict. Here's Biden in disarray. Yeah. And meanwhile, you know, his, his new ad is kick ass, right? The new ad is great. The yeah. messaging is good. Uh, just a real quick one. The New York Times last week also this big story. Biden is losing the Internet to Trump. He's losing the Internet to Trump. Well, he lost the internet to Sanders during the primary, and he, and he won it in a landslide. Maybe it's not who has the most YouTube followers that's going to be the next president. And every poll that's been done, Eric, in the every last year is about the same as he's up by about seven points over Trump. And it's like, oh, well, you know, anyway. All right. Love you, Eric. Love your books. Love your hair. Yes. And love Press Run. I uh, love Press Run. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great week. All you right. Too. See you next week.